Hey everybody, this is Ted from Vicknell Racing Products with another Tech Tip Tuesday. Uh, today we're going to discuss springs and length of springs. We get a lot of phone calls all the time from a lot of customers regarding what kind of spring or what length spring do I need on my race car. It, the determining factor is, most of the time, is the length of, of the shock and where you're putting it and the rate of the spring itself. What is spring rate? So a spring rate is the how much weight it takes to compress this spring one inch. So for in this example, I have a 150 spring. So to get this spring down, this is a 10 inch spring. To, to make this spring from a 10 inches to nine inches, I need to put 150 pounds of weight on this spring. So that's what the rate actually signifies. If that spring is compressed to nine inches and it's a 10 inch spring, and it says 150 pounds, that is a 150 pound spring. At two inches, a 150 would double its rate, so it would be a 300. Then it would go at three inches, it takes 450 pounds to compress that spring three inches. Doesn't matter the length of the spring, you can have a 14 inch, a 10 inch, a 12 inch, that is universal across the board. The difference between a 12 inch and a 10 inch is the amount of gap that a spring has and the amount of travel it's going to have. So a 10 inch spring, only has, this is a regular non-barrel spring from Eibach, it only has three quarters of an inch between the between each coil. This 150 is a 12 inch um, 2530 series, it has an inch and a quarter between the coils. So this spring has a lot more travel than this spring does because as you compress this, these coils get closer together, eventually they're going to touch each other and they're going to coil bind whereas this spring has a lot more travel. So if you have a, a real soft right front spring, a 12 inch spring is probably a better choice on the right front because, especially a 2530 series, because you're gonna get a lot more travel before them coils start to touch each other. The other thing to remember is when we start getting into spring rubbers. Spring rubbers, the amount of gap between the coils is determined by the spring rate and the type of spring, but when we start to add spring rubbers to this, how fast a spring rubber gets picked up is determined by how close the coils are together. So this spring doesn't have a ton of, or it's gonna have a big gap between it, so it's not gonna pick up a spring rubber very fast. Whereas this spring picks up a spring rubber very quick because the coils are a lot closer together. I have a 10 inch spring here that I've spring smashed to 18 inches. My load number is 160 pounds. This is just an arbitrary number, it doesn't really mean anything. Your load number is going to be different. But what I've done is I've compressed this spring to 9 inches. So my spring rate is actually rated at 150 pounds, but it's actually uh, more like 160. And I've taken this same 12 inch spring and done the exact same thing. So I've compressed it 1 inch, my center to center is still 18 inches, and my load number is 160 pounds. So why is it 160 pounds? Because you do have gas pressure that is pushing down on the load cell as well. So this spring might be 150 pounds, but this total unit of the shock and the spring itself is 160 on the spring smasher. Every spring has a purpose. The determining factor in that spring isn't always necessarily the length. There's a lot of factors that go into the choices of springs, whether it's the length, the spring rate, whether or not you're going to use a spring rubber, um, the gap between the coils, uh, all of that stuff goes into determining what length of spring that you actually need. Hopefully, with a little bit of this knowledge, you can better understand springs and make better choices.